We're actually in a hypnotic state. The baby's brain waves are so lower that it's as if that we were actually hypnotised. And that's why they're like a sponge for information, because they are actually at a hypnotic state. So certain things that are happening in their environment. But the interesting thing about bringing up a child is a lot of it is actually about observation. It's not what you're teaching them, it's what they're observing in you. So that's why when they come up with a swear word, where do they hear it? Well, they actually observed you using it in a context, and when they use it, they usually set it up in such a good context, don't they? <laughs> you go, wow, they really must understand what the word is. Because what they did is they observed and they looked at the emotion of it. See, if a child falls over, the first thing it does is steps up, looks over at the parent. Was that bad or was that good? And the mother goes, oh, you've fallen over. Go, oh, it must be bad. <laughs> Because the mother indicated, hey, that was bad. And what did the kid do? They anchored first to go, is this, hey, was this good or bad? And as soon as the reactions of the parents, they then say, oh, falling over equals bad, equals cry. So whenever they go to fall over, what happens? You've seen kids fall over and you know it wasn't a major issue. But what do they do? <gasps> Where did that come from? Observation. So everything is explainable. And when we work in environments, we go into a lot of corporates and deal with issues and everything is explainable. So all behaviour is explainable. So what I want you to always remember when dealing with other people is we always act with good intent. This means that our subconscious is always doing something for the positive. So even if I hypnotise you and I said, now pick up that gun and shoot that person over there, you know it's not good and you will not do it. See, I can't get you doing anything if I've got you tranced, hypnotised, I can't get you doing anything that you believe is not right. So then your question is, well, why when the person grabs you on and brings you up on stage and says, be a dog or a chicken, why the hell do I do that? I, don't, I didn't want that. Well, the fact was, when you went to the show, what did you tell yourself? I'm going to a stage show, and if I get pulled up on stage, what's going to happen? I'm going to be doing all these funny things. You've actually given yourself permission. But if that stage hypnotist grabbed you on the street, and try doing the same thing, it would not work. But you've got to be careful of what you're allowing yourself to be hypnotised on. You are in total control, so everything external to you and how you're feeling internal, you have control to take control of that. Because when people are in depression and all those kind of things, or taking drugs, it's about them not feeling in control and they're looking for an escape. And sometimes it's because they actually forgot the instruction manual to their brain to actually explain how do they take control. And tonight, I've given you several techniques. Now, I haven't seen too many pads and pens, so um, if you want to get anything I've um, got in terms of the goal plan, and a particular document I have called Managing Self-Sabotage, drop me an email, and what I'll actually do is I'll send you that instruction manual for your brain, so therefore you'll remember these techniques because you've been given some gems that can completely change your life. I work with people that have terminally disease that go to health. I work with people that are broke that are moving to millionaire. Millionaires are wanting to become multi-millionaires. The money, by the way, when it comes to wealth, people often judge success by money. Now remember what we talked about in the first week. It's not about money. It's about actually being passionate, using your natural talents because money comes. When you're actually living your passion, money comes. So when I deal with people with a lot of money, do you know the one topic that never comes up is money. Yet when I talk with people that have money, they keep talking about them thinking about money and driving for money and being motivated by money. I can tell you they're not motivated by money. Donald Trump, a billionaire, what does he talk about? He's in it for the game. He has fun doing the deals. It's actually not about the money. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for your uh, commitment tonight coming and uh, being the fourth session. It's been an absolute pleasure. Hopefully you've got a bit more understanding of your instruction manual of your brain and therefore you've got little excuse not to succeed. And if things are challenging you, remember some of these techniques because you are the record player and you can completely change your life because you can take control and take control of that genie that is in your mind. Thank you very much.